Mooresville Public Library and I went walking through the stacks today and we call our bookshelves our stacks but we went walking through the stacks today and I want to show you some of the really neat books that I found that maybe you haven't seen in the library or maybe you didn't know that we carry. So let's explore some of the new and some of our, my favorite nonfiction, which means true information. So we're just gonna explore our nonfiction world with some of our books that I have found and discovered today. So let's get started. So a large part of your nonfiction section is going to be about animals. It's going to be broken up by the, the type of species it is. So this one is one of our newer ones. It's called How to Talk to a Tiger and Other Animals. Now what's really cool about this book is it shows you all different types of animals inside, but the better, the cooler part of this is that it's going to tell you why they behave the way they behave. So one of the things that when I was reading through this book this morning was that a rattlesnake doesn't shake its tail at something it wants to eat. It shakes its tail at someone it's trying to alert to let them know he's in the area more to let you leave him alone because he doesn't want you to bother him any more than you want him to bother you. But a lot of people think, oh, he only shakes his tail at something he wants to eat. No, that's not necessarily true. But a lot of the items in this book is going to show you about animal behaviors and maybe kind of explain why animals behave the way they do. If we understand them, maybe we can live a little easier around them and sometimes that we're not as much or as, as afraid of animals as sometimes we can be. So that's a great one to end check out. Here's another really cool one. I really like books that have interesting animals in it or book animals I've never seen before. So this one is called Really Weird Animals, and it's all broken down by the species again. This one I chose was fish, because here is called a rosy-lipped batfish. That's right, that's what I said. Here's the blobfish. I know some of you have talked about that with me when we've done some story times. But there's some really cool, the leafy sea dragon, great animals that, tr that really exist in our world, but maybe you've never seen them in real life. So this is a great way to visit that and learn about them and learn kind of where they live and how they live. So those are some great animal books. Now other animals a lot of people do in our library is our pet books or different books about our pets and animals, especially dogs and cats. Big, big hot topic in the library. Well, some of our dog books are actually about some of the service dogs that we have in our world. This one is our fire dog heroes. So we know there's dogs that the police use in our canine units, but there are fire and rescue dogs. We have search and rescue dogs. We have an entire series dedicated on all those service dogs and how they're trained, when they're used, how they're best utilized in the world, and what they're best, and how you can learn more resources on those individual types of dogs. So that's a great little series that I love to give to my, my kids who love to read about animals, especially dogs and cats. So those are some great animal ones. Now, anybody who knows me knows I am a big science person. So I love anything science, STEM, I love it because I think ants asking questions and learning how something works is a big deal. It is something that teaches you something that you didn't know before, and that's one of the reasons why I love to read. So we have some great books in the library that have to do with science. So this one is called Make This. So this is a little more engineering than it is science, but each one, each page is a different pro uh, project you can make at home. That's things that you can do in your house with items you have around your house to teach you. This is a string telephone, but it shows you how, but it also explains to you how it works and why it works, which is a big deal because a lot of people know these projects, but maybe don't understand why they work the way they do. This is also written by our National Geographic Kids. They have written some phenomenal material out there for kids right now, especially science, weather, um, the human body, any types of things like that. But they're really well written, but they also have great illustrations and pictures in them. Makes it a little more fun to read. So check those out if you can. Now, like I said about science, this is simple science projects that you can do at home. Again, using things that you have in your house. Each page is a different science project, 
very easy to understand the steps in these projects, very easy to, uh, to actually accomplish the projects, and then it will explain the science behind the projects. So that's a really neat type of book as well. So now let's get into a little bit more of our science with here's, here's a neat little series that I found that um, our supervisor has brought in and this is called The Human Body in 3D. Now I know it's a book so it's still not considered 3D because it's actually in a flat book but the pictures and the illustrations are just phenomenal. I mean, and what's really cool is that we can all look at a picture of a skeleton in a book, right? But when you start looking at how the muscles lay on the skeleton, or maybe you look at how the, the face is constructed, these are all different things that people want to know. There are all these different items, different versions of these 3D medical books that might teach you more about your body that you didn't know or may be interested in. So that's a great little series to check out as well. Now. Wow, we're all going back to school now and this was a big big deal for my kids my kids always love to try to make different snacks when they got home after school so this is a series this is called banana split pizza maybe not the snack that you can make after school but inside are going to be some very easy snack recipes that you can make for at your house these are stained glass cookies and then here are French fry fake outs, and it's just made with bread, with some dough. You're making a sand parfait there. And then there's some pizza fondue. And then of course we have our pond scum. My kids would love that. But neat little ways for you to try to change up what you snack on, maybe with you or with your friends. Maybe you have some friends over at your house that's something you guys can do together and you can learn by reading on how to, how to make those. Okay, lastly, I wanna talk about our art section. We have our art section in the library and it's very, very expansive. We have like everything from how to draw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to um, your, your classic painters and how they drew and how they painted and why they painted the way they did. But some of the ones that I've really fallen for is our system right here called Make a Masterpiece. And these are really, really neat. So this is actually called Make a Masterpiece Charcoal. This is gonna show you, for those of you budding artists out there, this is gonna show you how to use the charcoals that you see when you go into the art stores. It's gonna show you how to blend. It's gonna show you how to make some products that will help you blend them, make products to help you erase the charcoal if you need to. It's gonna show you how to make stencils, all different types of areas to charcoal. And so each one of these books is a different facet to the art world. So you also have acrylics and you have colored pencils and you have pastels or maybe watercolors, things that maybe you wanted to learn about, but you didn't quite know how to start using that product. I said lastly, but I do want to say some, just a quick little note about sports. We have an incredible sports section in our nonfiction. Everything from every football team to every baseball team, all of them. But some of the fun stuff that's over there is the trivia books. We have trivia books, which is just really great. One page, each page is different, and each page is gonna be a different subject, and it's gonna tell you some really great trivia items about that, that sport or about that sports star. So there's different types of sports ones. So the reason I love nonfiction is because sometimes you're just not that person who wants to read a thick chapter book. Don't let that intimidate you. Grab some nonfiction books that gives you some factual information. A lot of my people who don't like to read those thick chapter books love nonfiction. So try it out. Grab some out of your school library. Come here, grab some books out of our library. Ask questions from us if you need us. That's what we're here for. But I would really love to see you guys come into the library and come see what you can find while you're walking through our stacks. Have a great day, guys.